Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just broke down all of the craziness that happened yesterday. Colorado got a big time win over NDSU. We got uh, Minnesota barely missing out on a win at home over uh, North Carolina. So a ton of really, really good games yesterday. But now it's time to get into Saturday. We have so many great games on Saturday. We've already broken down a number of the big time games throughout this week. So if you want to go check those out, you're more than welcome to. But let's focus on AM versus Notre Dame here for a second because this one's going to be fun. It is the primetime game. Game day will be there. So a ton of energy around this one. And I think this one's going to be an absolute doozy. We have so many incredible players in this game. We have so many different storylines going in, but AM is the favorite ta team going in. They're favored by about three points, two and a half, depending on where you look. Uh, Notre Dame uh, is one of those teams that really hard to get a beat on going into this season. So I'm not all that surprised that AM is favored in this game, over under at 46 and a half. And I think this one's going to be awesome. Primetime event, obviously. Whoever walks out of this one with a win, is going to be thinking they can make the CFP uh, uh, the college football playoff. There's no doubt in my mind. They absolutely will be staring at that as not only something that they'd love to do, but something that they very much think that they can and honestly should do by that point on. So it's going to be an incredible game. Obviously, the CFP implications are huge, but let's move on to some players to watch in this one because... Jeremiah Love is downright special. I cannot wait to watch this guy be the running back one for this team because I think his athletic ability is unlike a lot of other running backs across the country. I think he can do stuff on the football field that is downright special and whether it's running in between the tackles, outside the tackles, screens, drop-offs, anything you need him to do, he can do it. And he's one of those guys that Notre Dame doesn't necessarily have the prerequisite talent at wide receiver that a lot of these other teams have. This might be their Swiss Army knife that can make all of that go away very quickly. So very much like this kid, and I think a lot of more people will know that name by the end of Saturday. Jason Onye is another guy I want to watch because when you talk about this A&M off, uh, offense in general or team in general, the offensive line is the place that you're a little bit worried about. A year ago, it was probably their worst unit on their team, and I think they could be slow out of the gate, not necessarily thinking they're going to be you know, just what they were a year ago, but I think there's a reality where, especially against this defensive front for Notre Dame, it just looks a little clunky out of the gates, and this would be a big reason for that. So very much like Jason Onye, and I think he's going to make at least a couple of plays in this game. Le'Veon Moss is an obvious example here because no Reuben Owens, you're going to need someone to step up, and he is definitely going to be the go-to back for this team. Amari Daniels is a very good player. EJ Smith, Emmett Smith's son, is going to be able to make some plays, but at the end of the day, he's going to be the load carrier. He's going to be the guy that they're pointing to every single down, so... <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. Um, but at the end of the day, it will be interesting to see what he's able to pull off. Very talented kid, someone that can absolutely do anything they want him to do, but was just thrust into a little bit more of action this upcoming year. And then, finally, Torian York is a guy that definitely needs more recognition. One of the best linebackers in the entire country, and this easily could have been Nick Scourton, and we will get to him a little bit later. But at the end of the day, when I look at uh, what they're going to need to do to stop this Notre Dame offense, it starts with a guy I talked about to lead this off. Jeremiah Love is so dangerous out of the backfield. He's so dangerous all over the field that Torian York is likely going to get that assignment quite a bit and is likely going to be the green dot guy for this team. So he's going to have a lot on his plate on Saturday. And I think if that defense succeeds, it's likely because Torian York had a very, very good game, whether it's communication or guarding Jeremiah Love out of the backfield or just making all the tackles that he's going to make, I'm sure. But big time storylines heading into Saturday. There are so many to talk about, but I think the biggest one is these O-lines are weak if you're looking in the grand scheme of college football. They are definitely weak as you walk into this uh, year, and it's mainly on the Notre Dame side. You know, losing Charles Jagusa, your starting left tackle, and having to move everything around. Anthony Knapp, a freshman starting at left tackle. Um, I believe Sam Pendleton starting at left guard, if I'm not mistaken. Both guys that have not made a start in their career. Going to be very interesting how that left side of that offensive line looks. And then on the AM side, we talked about it. Uh, it's 
definitely was the worst unit a year ago. Returns three starters, so maybe everything has gotten a little bit better. Trey Zoon over at left tackle is someone they really like, so it's probably not going to be quite as bad as a year ago, but definitely an area that uh, Notre Dame could take advantage of. Former head coach and a quarterback duo are facing off in this game. Kind of the weird uh, world of the transfer portal is this can happen every now and then, and it'll be really interesting to see how Mike Elko approaches guarding his old quarterback because he knows a lot about what Riley Leonard can do on that football field, and it'll be fascinating to see just how he goes about business. And then on the other side, what does Riley Leonard know about Mike Elko's defense, and could he expose it? A very, very smart player that maybe picked up a couple of things that he's able to expose on Saturday and then coaching changes on both sides are a huge part of this. I believe both play callers on both sides of the ball for both of these teams have changed this past offseason where Colin Klein came in to be the OC for uh, A&M while Mike Elko is likely going to be the play caller on the defensive side of the ball and then you have Mike Denbrock and Al Golden calling plays at OC and DC respectively for Notre Dame. So elite play callers going at it. It's going to be so much fun to watch the little uh, intricacies, the chess match if you will of this game but let's get into how these teams can win and we'll start with Notre Dame get the ball out of uh, Riley Leonard's hands quickly is the number one thing this O-line is not going to be able to hold up all day I do think they are going to be a good O-line throughout the year I think Anthony App frankly is going to be a star throughout his career and at Notre Dame I think the first week is going to be a little bit rough. He's going to get a lot of Nick Stewart. He's going to get a lot of Shamar Stewart, or a lot of Nick Scourton, a lot of Shamar Stewart at, at Kyle Field, and it's going to be really tough. There's no doubt about it. So getting Riley Leonard out of the uh, out of really bad situations, whether it's dumping it off to Jeremiah Love or Jadarian Price or getting the ball out quickly to go, guys like Jordan Faison or uh, Jaden Greathouse or Chris Mitchell, all of these guys are very talented and you have the ability to set up those uh, concepts for yourself. Now, they don't necessarily have that speedster that you love to have in this kind of scenario, but they got plenty of guys. And then you have that big time tight end, Mitchell Evans. It's all about just making sure Riley Leonard is upright and not having to get into precarious situations with that O-line. So get the ball out quickly, kind of like what Colorado did yesterday where it wasn't the greatest O-line performance, but got the ball out of Shadur hands very, very quickly, ran the ball to the outside instead of the inside so they didn't get blown up quite as much. A lot of different things that they were able to kind of negate the O-line just a little bit on Saturday, and I think that's likely the approach for Notre Dame. And then get after Connor Wegman. This is a very talented kid who's been very efficient through nine games and playing where 16 touchdowns, only two picks throughout that, and they both came in a Miami game last year, and in that Miami game, they heated them up a ton. They made him very uncomfortable in that pocket, and he was a little bit early on in his starting career, so not nothing crazy by any means, but this is the reality. If you can get after this guy, if you can make him move his feet just a little bit too much and make a throw just a little bit off balance, then guys like Benjamin Morrison, guys like Xavier Watts are just going to eat that up and take it for 100 yards. That's just the reality of this back end. So if you can get home, if you can make this guy uncomfortable, you're going to do a lot of special things on defense on Saturday. And then find that difference maker on the outside. Period. End of story. This is something they need. If they don't get this throughout the season, there's no world where they make any type of noise in the playoff or even make the playoff, honestly. But Chris Mitchell is the guy that I'm circling. Obviously, the transfer from uh, FIU that had over a thousand yards a year ago that's going to be the guy that you're going to want to watch number 10 in uh on with that gold helmet but then Jaden Greathouse is another guy I'm watching he had a really really good start to his career with two touchdowns against Navy in that week zero matchup but kind of slowed down throughout the year I still think a very very talented kid and someone he's in the slot position so is a little bit of a mismatch in that slot position with the body size and the body control so very much like this kid and I think he might just be able to be that guy on the outside side for Notre Dame this year. Moving on to A&M, expose this uh, inexperienced O-line. Just tear them to pieces because that's the way that you're really going to be able to win this. It would keep the Riley Leonard legs kind of out of the conversation just a little bit. It would make this offensive line super nervous and Jeremiah Love, Jadarian Price would not be able to get downhill. So this comes down a lot to the edge rushers, whether it's Nick uh, Scourton, uh, Shamar Stewart, Cassius Howell, Solomon Shields, all of those guys are going to get after the quarterback, no doubt about it. But then you need some guys like Shamar Turner 
on the inside to just absolutely impose their will, to just uh, dominate the interior of this line. And he's going to get Sam Pendleton, that left guard, a ton in this game. And I wouldn't be surprised if Sam Pendleton ended up on his back a couple of times in this game. So this is the goal. You know, if you can limit the time that Riley Leonard has to digest this offense, especially with the Mike Denbrock offense that takes a little bit of time to develop, you might just be able to get a couple of sacks, and that might just be the entirety of the difference in this game overall. And then get enough from your O-line. Both of these defensive line versus O-lines, it firmly goes in the defensive line uh, direction. But if you can get enough from this group, if you if this group that returns three starters, if they have gotten better from a year ago, and you can just shield these guys off and just give them enough time to get the ball out of uh, Wegman's hands early, which is something we'll talk about here in a second, and just make sure that he's comfortable, you're going to be off to the races so talking about Connor Wegman get him in a ry- rhythm early because this is one of those quarterbacks kind of like Garrett Nussmeyer over at LSU that we'll talk about in the next segment but um, it's kind of like him where you have this incredible ability to put the ball really wherever you want and throw it with confidence and do all of these incredible things throwing the ball you got to get going. You got to get that confidence. You got to get that juice behind you, especially for a guy that has not played a college football game in quite some time. So he's going to have to be ready. It's going to be a lot of adrenaline, really, really high. Just let him kind of settle into this one. Just let him get those quick routes to Amari Daniels out of the backfield or Cyrus Allen on the outside. Noah Thomas, maybe just throw one up to him and let him go make a play. Just get this guy really comfortable because then when he's comfortable, it's going to be outright terrifying. The dude can put the ball wherever he wants. He can throw with absolute confidence, but you got to get there before you can do all those things. So I think Connor Wegman is one of those guys that the ceiling is through the roof, and if they can get him into rhythm early on, this Notre Dame defense, as good as they are, might just not have an answer for him, honestly. But moving on to the picks for this game, Man, I fought back and forth on this one. I'll be totally honest with you. There were not a there's not a good feeling in my gut about the way this game is going to go. But I'm gonna go with a couple of things that I can say absolutely confidently. Nick Scourton is gonna be an absolute problem against Anthony Knapp, and this AM crowd is going to be on fire. So give me the Aggies. I think they're going to be able to pull this one off at home. 24 to 18. This one's going to be gross. I can promise you that. This is going to be a heavy run game. Neither of these teams are going to be able to air the ball out too, too much in this one, but I think A&M makes enough plays on the defensive side of the ball. I think they make one big time takeaway, and I think Riley Leonard's legs, which could have been the X factor in this game, are taken out a little bit. Now, maybe they're not taken out. Maybe that is the X factor, and it goes the opposite direction, but as of right now, I am going to go with the Aggies at home, one that I feel okay about. Uh, that I think that's probably as good as you're going to feel about a pick for this game, and probably about as good as I'm going to feel about the pick for the next game. Uh, right after this break, we're going to get into LSU versus USC. This one's a nightmare, because you have no earthly idea what these defenses are going to look like, and you got no earthly idea who's going to have the ball last, which might just be the deciding factor in this game. So it's going to be incredible to break this one down, but we'll take our second break, and right after this, we will break that one down, so stick with us. <laughs> 